Hi, class. Hi, class. This is 16.3, and we're actually doing probability in this section. Um, I feel like 16.1 and 16.2 was just leading us, you know, getting us the prior knowledge that we need to know in order to um, understand probability. And now we're there. We're here. So I am excited to present this to you because I feel that probability is a real life thing that we will encounter, especially we always see it in the weather, right? They say there's a 34% chance of rain or whatnot. And we also see it in just medical diagnoses. <laughs> um, your chance of living is this, or, you know, like, <clears throat> um, and we see it in games and cards and, <clears throat> and seeing probabilities helps us make wiser choices. And really, I think my hope for you is that you understand probability at a deeper level so that you can um, truly understand these numbers around you that, are, that come up every day, that come up in real life. So <clears throat> let me show you with you this <clears throat> scenario. If there are 30 students in this class and I write everyone's name on a small piece of paper, and put all the names of everyone in this class in a hat. And let's say I, I fold every paper so that every paper, I can't see anybody's name on the paper. They're, it's all, the names are all hidden. <clears throat> and I close my eyes and I reach in the hat and I, I, I you know, move my hand around, mix up all the names really well, and I just pick one particular person. <clears throat> That <clears throat> is an example of how I'm trying to be fair to everyone in the class, right? I'm trying to make sure that everybody has an equal chance to be chosen. And let's say I was, you know, the winner was going to get, you know, I don't know, um, a, a gift card <clears throat> of some sort from me. So um, I want to make sure that everybody has an equal chance to be getting to be chosen. That's why everybody's name is in the hat only once. And um, <clears throat> I want to make sure that no one that that also. <clears throat> oh, okay. I guess I, we just want to make sure that there was no favoritism, right? So <clears throat> that is. I wanted to make sure it's done at random. And that's our best way of picking somebody at random without it, any favoritism is putting their hat, their names in a hat and choosing it like that. So let me just, just, let me just give you a visual of what it looks like. So let me show you this little video. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, somebody took a literal, literally a hat and it doesn't have to be a hat of course, but um, it just has to be some, and they, put names on the these little piece of papers and they, um, you know, they folded it so they can't see the name. And then now you're going to see, they're going to pick out a name. And there we go. That's what it looks like to um, pick a name out of a hat. And like I said, it's supposed to be fit equally and um, um <clears throat> that you could pick any name there it could be equally chosen and you pick it at random <clears throat> so my question for you is if i put your guys's name in a hat and there's 30 of you and i folded the little papers and i picked and i mixed them all up real good and i when maybe I was blindfolded, make sure I didn't couldn't see anything. Everybody's name is equally likely to be chosen, and I pick one person's name out. What is the likelihood of me choosing your name? <clears throat> and to kind of figure this out, we have to think about how many of those little papers. Well, first of all, what comes to mind is like how many total possible outcomes could happen? Like how many other people could I, names could I choose? <coughs> <coughs> or just how many different ways could this play out, right? 
So the thing is, there is 30 names in the hat. So I could choose any of those 30 names. And your name, the one you want me to pick, is only one of those 30. So <clears throat> your name is one in 30 total possible outcomes. So the likelihood of me picking your name is one in one in 30, which if we write it, um, often we write probability as a fraction, the number of times, and it, <clears throat> on the numerator, we write the number of ways that what we want happens. So if I, there's one way for me to pick your name because there's only one little paper with your name on it in that book. And then out of the total number of things that could happen, I are all the numbers of papers in the <clears throat> hat, all right? So that's why one out of um, 30. Your, your um, I believe your textbook likes to use K. K is the number of ways your event could happen, that your desired event could happen. And N is the total number, uh, often is total number of possible outcomes. So just so you know that, that notation. Then I ask, so what it, um, the likelihood that I will not pick your name, what is the likelihood that I will not pick your name? Well, there's 29 other people in the class that are not you, right? So there's 29 other names over 30. So <clears throat> the question is, um, <clears throat> are your chances good that I'm going to choose your name? And to really ask, answer that question, you kind of have to think about, well, the, what is the, pro the likelihood of the opposite happening? So the, the likelihood that I'm going to pick your name is one in 30. <clears throat> and if you think, you can, you can think about it like this. If I were to choose, <clears throat> do that 30 times, if I were to, to pick out a name out of the hat 30 times, I would only expect to get your name one time, one of those 30 times, right? And if I were to play, if I were to pick 30 times, 30 names out of the hat, 29 of the 30 times, I would expect to get some other person's name and not your name, okay? <clears throat> so, are your chances that your name is drawn, are they good? And you kind of have to compare that to what are the what are the odds or what is the what is the likelihood that my name is not picked? You know, like is 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 the likelihood of my name being not picked higher than my name is picked? Because if the likelihood that it's not picked is higher than the likelihood of it being picked, then your odds, I would say, are bad. They are not good. You know, and so that's what's happening here. And if you wanted to, you could compare these two fractions, you know, that one third, which is the like one thirtieth, so it likelihood of your name being chosen is a lot less than the likelihood of it not being chosen. So I would say that your odds are not good. Or your chances. It's another way of um we of saying just likelihood. But we'll see in a minute that the the, the, the word there's a few words that we like to use um with probability, and I'll introduce them to you, and I'll just let you know what normally we want when we say those words. But um, <clears throat> so I would say my chances are not good. the The chances are against are against me. Okay. And I will say it is more likely that they do not choose my name. Remember that when you compare fractions, if the fractions have the same denominator, we're just comparing the numerators. So that's why I say that 29 over 30 is a larger fraction than 1 over 30. And you could say it's quite a bit bigger because there are 29 pieces of the pie rather than just one piece of the pie, right? <clears throat> if you want to think back of fractions as being pieces of pie. So it's like 30 pieces in this pie, right? That's what fractions was. And 29 of them are shaded. It means I almost have a full pie. 
But if I have 30 pieces in a pie and I only have one slice, I only have a really tiny, I'm not doing a good job of doing slices, but um, I only have a little tiny sliver in that pie if I only have one of the 30 pieces. Okay, so that's much smaller amount of pie. And this one is going to look like almost everything is shaded except for a small sliver, right? And this, well, I'm not doing a good job, but like, um, it's hard for me to do 30 pieces of this pie, but like, I'm trying to try to show you at least a little bit. So that would mean that all of the rest of them are shaded except for like one slice, right? And that's a lot more pie than um, only one slice. So you can see that fraction is much bigger. So your likelihood of not being chosen is much bigger than being chosen, okay? So anyways, that's um, this is probability. <clears throat> probability is the likelihood that something is going to occur. And... <clears throat> As, you, as I saw a minute ago, when they ask for the probability, it's usually written as a fraction and it's the number of desired outcomes, the number of ways that you can get what you want to happen over the total number of possible outcomes. That's what the probability is. It's usually written as a fraction, but it also can be written as, you could turn that fraction into a decimal and you could also turn that decimal into a percent. So it could be written, it's commonly written as a fraction, decimal, or percent. A chance... Okay, so when they're talking about chance, they usually want you to write it as um, probability written as a percent. And um, <clears throat> a ratio, oh, and odds. Odds is a, just a different, okay. So these are all different ways to kind of express, a chance is a way to express probability and likelihood. And they're saying it's it's a probability written as a percent. And odds is another way to write probability, explain, you know, to show. And um, it's written as a ratio. But all these are the same. You have fraction, percent, ratio. It's just the same number written in a different format, right? So we'll practice writing them in all three different formats. But odds is a ratio expressing the number of desired outcomes to the number of undesired outcomes. So notice how the number of desired outcomes is going to come first and second is the undesired. So they say, consider rolling a fair die. Now, remember way back here in 16.1, I believe, I showed you that a, what a dice looks like. And so remember this little picture here, this is what it looks like. And I explained to you that there's six different sides of the dice. So there's six different sides that it could possibly land on when we roll a dice. And only one side is facing up. So that's the one that we read. So they ask us, what is the probability, consider rolling a fair die. The probability of rolling a four, now a four is one of the total six different possible outcomes. So that's why they're saying the probability of rolling a four is one out of six. So like I, if I roll a dice, I could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, five, or six. That's, that is the sample space, which is the, all of the total possible outcomes. There are, I'm just gonna write this underneath it. There's six total possible outcomes. And when I, how, <clears throat> and if I want to roll a four, if that's my desired event, there's only one way to do that because there's only one four on the dice. So that's why they're saying that it's one over six. Okay. Then they ask here, the chances of rolling a four are about 17%. So how they found that is they just did one divided by six, because you can turn any fraction into a decimal by doing the numerator divided by the denominator. So it's one divided by six. And <clears throat> let's, let me just, 
quickly. Okay, they must have gotten like, oh, it's probably 1.0666, which they probably rounded that to, you know, they probably rounded it to two decimal places. So they looked at this, at the third six, at the third decimal place was a six. And so that's greater than five and they probably rounded to point. I believe that's probably what they, uh, I, okay, 0.17. And then now to turn that to a percent, I move it twice to the right and that becomes 17%. So that's why they're saying that the chances of rolling a die and landing on a four are 17%. <clears throat> and then, so that's just written in a different way from part A. Part C, now we're gonna write it in a different way. The odds of rolling a four. So there's the way they write this is they, the first number is the number of ways that I can get a four, that's one. And instead of writing the total number of ways, they write all of the other possible outcomes other than getting a four. So that's why they did six minus all of the, the first number and they got five. So there's five other <clears throat> um, possible ways that things that the dice could land on. And I kind of prefer it when they write it as at odds like this, as one to five, because you see that, and when I when somebody says I have odds one to five, that means to me for every one time that my name is in that hat, somebody else's name is in there five times. So they are five times more likely to win than I am. Right. So that's what, so I, this, like I was saying earlier to really figure out, are my odds good or bad? You have to com compare your, the odds of your event happening to your event, not happening. And that's what odds, when you write probability in this way, um, it, it shows you the, 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 um, <clears throat> it's really the number of ways your event could happen compared to all your number of the number of ways your event could not happen. And that really shows you what, you know, how likely it is for your event to happen in comparison to it not happening. So that's really nice. So I like, I like probability written in the in um odds. I think a lot of like sports games and stuff like that, they like to write it in terms of odds as well. <clears throat> A few things to note, the smallest probability is zero. If you have a probability of zero, if, you know, if <clears throat> let's say I wanna roll a seven on a die, there's no seven. Well, I mean, there are different dies out there, but if there's a typical six-sided dice, there's no seven on it. So, <clears throat> so, the probability of me rolling a seven on a six sided dice is zero. There's no chance. So that means this means it will not happen. It will definitely not happen. Right? If somebody has something has a zero possibility probability. The largest possibility probability, if we're writing it in a decimal format, is one. Or if we're writing it in percent format, a hundred percent. And that makes that's where we get that the term, I'm a hundred percent sure because I'm, that means it's definitely gonna happen, right? <clears throat> the largest probability is one, or you could say 1%. And we could have said 0% for the, for talking about chances, but this will means, this means it will definitely happen. <clears throat> the sum of the probabilities of all individual events in a sample space is, so if I add the likelihood of me, um, <clears throat> the probability of me get, rolling a one plus the probability of me rolling a two plus the probability of me rolling a three plus the probability of a four, five, and six, the probability of all of those added together should be one whole. <clears throat> or if you had them right in its percents, 100%, right? And we can kind of see that. Like, um, <clears throat> notice how the probability of rolling a four is just as likely as, as is the same as the probability of rolling a three. So <clears throat> you could add those all up and find out they, they should all approximately 
if we did some rounding, they may not exactly go to one, but it's just because of the rounding, but they would normally go to one if we didn't round. But anyways, <clears throat> the probability is written as a fraction or decimal. Okay, that's something that we want to know, that we want to understand. And odds are written at written with the little, um, <clears throat> you saw the little like um, two dots or they also use the word two between the two numbers. So they say one, and, and, and we read it one to three or one, two, three. So it's written it's down here, it's one. I read it out loud when I see the little two dots, I read one, two, three, or else it's also written just one to three. That's as written as odds. Okay, so let's do some problems. A brown bag is contains three green candies and seven purple candies. Find the probability of drawing a green candy. Of course, if you're if you have your eyes closed and they're all equally likely to be chosen, and one isn't like I don't know stuck on the bottom, I can't get it or something. Okay, find the probability of drawing a green candy. So <clears throat> I'm going to try to draw that. Do it in a fraction form. <clears throat> And it's going to be k over n, which is k is a number of ways that I can get a green candy or yeah, because the desired event is a green candy, right? So that's an k is going to be the number of ways that I can get a green candy. And n is going to be to the total number of possible things that could happen when I put my bag, my, my, my hand in and pull out a marble, you know, what are all the different types of marbles it could be? So I see that there is three ways to get a green. There's three different greens in there. So I, my, the, I, there's three th ways that I'd be happy. And out of the, and there's three plus seven. So um, <clears throat> there's a total of, of 10 marbles in the, <clears throat> in the bag that I could choose from. So that is our total number of outcomes I could. <clears throat> so, Three of the 10 marbles in there are going to make me happy. So that like me, likelihood of me or the, um, drawing one of those is three out of 10. And like I said, to kind of visualize how big that is, we could um, draw a, a pie and we could say, oh, well, three of those 10 slices, we could draw 10 slices in the pie. I don't know if that was 10. And then we'd shade three of them. And that was what, you know, we could think of as um, that's the amount <clears throat> of how um, likely we are to, to pick a green one. Okay. And then it says find the odds of drawing a, a green candy. So we're going to draw, the, it's just expressing the same thing in a different way. So the odds of drawing a green candy are the, the number of ways that I can draw a green candy compared to the number of ways that I cannot do get a green candy. So there's three green candies and I'm gonna take the total number of possible outcomes and subtract three. And then that's gonna give me the ways that I can't get, that I don't get what I want. So that's seven. So that's my odds of drawing a green candy, three to seven. All right. <clears throat> and you can just think about this Am I more likely, am I, is, are my odds good to get a green candy? <clears throat> well, there's more, as we can see, there's more candies of other colors or just, you know, purples. There's more purples than greens. So our, our, our chance, our odds of getting a green candy when we put, put our hand in the bag and pick one at random is not, it's not as good as, as they are for getting a purple one. So anyways. All right, this is 16.3. An honest coin is tossed two times. Find the probability of the following events. So <clears throat> we are always gonna want to write out the sample space <clears throat> of the event. So an honest coin is tossed two times. This actually, we saw this back in 16.1. In, um, so, we list all of the possible outcomes. So if I if I um, 
toss a coin, I could have both of them land on heads. That's one possible outcome. I could have the first coin land on heads, the second coin land on tails. I could have the first coin um, land on tails and the second hand land on heads, or I could have the la the, them both land on tails. But those are all of the possible outcomes. Like I haven't, I listed all of them, right? Because either, and I can think about it this way. The first coin could be either heads and the second one we could say could be heads or tails. And the first one could be tails and the second one could be heads and tails. But that's all the different possible outcomes for flipping a coin twice. So I listed all the possible outcomes. So this is my N, the number of outcomes here um, <clears throat> is N. So you can see it's one, two, three three, four. There's four different ways to <clears throat> toss two coins, four different out possible outcomes when you pass, um, toss two coins. <clears throat> and the coin comes up tails twice. What is the probability? So we write, this is the notation we like to use. We like to use a big P and in parentheses, we write the uh, E1. And so it means that the, what we mean by this notation is the probability of event E occurring. <clears throat> that is gonna be the, the number of ways that event E could happen in the total sample space. So um, <clears throat> the coin comes up hit tails twice. So how many times do we see that happen? So I look at the first one, no, that didn't happen. There's no two tails there. No two tails there, no two tails. It only happens in the last um, outcome. So there's only one of the possible four different outcomes for that. So we say the probability of, of getting um, the coin, the tails twice is one out of four. Now, another way of doing this you could learn the you can use your multiplication rule from, from the previous class period. And you could say, well, but flipping the coin once is one decision. The, the choice, the, the, the coin is going to make a decision. It's going to it has two choices. So, and I want it to land on the on on the tails. So I want there's one of two different choices, two different choices. So the probability of um, that first event, the first the coin, the first coin landing on tails is one out of two times the, the now we see there's a second decision that's being made. Um, and I'm happy with one out of the two decisions. So um, you could um, say the probability of my first event, which is the first coin toss times the probability of my second event, which is the second coin toss, I can multiply those together and I can get the probability of the, the two, of, two, to, um, two events to happen at once. So that's another way of doing that. This method doesn't always work because um, sometimes you just need to list out the outcomes and um, sometimes you, it just uh, doesn't work. Sometimes you can use this because of the scenario. Anyways, okay, let's go to the next one. The coin comes up heads twice. The coin comes up heads twice. Okay, so that's going to be very simple, right? Um, the only, there's only one, it's, it's very similar to the first one. There's only one outcome where the heads comes out twice. So I'm going to say the probability of event two, E2, the event two, is equal to one out of four as well. It's, a, it's the same as the above because there's only one out of the four outcomes that has two heads. Okay, then they say event E is the second toss is a tails. So I just look at, there's two, I look, this is my first toss, this is my second toss. So there's two times that the, the tails ends up being um, second. So the probability of event E is a number of times that the tails can come up second in all of the total possible outcomes. That's two. And that's, and then out of the total four outcomes. So we can reduce that and do make sure to reduce your fractions. 
I um, divide the top and bottom by the same number, and then I get one over two. So that would be my answer, my final answer for number three, part C. Okay, now let's move on to three. A pair of honest dice are rolled and the points are added. Find the probability of each of the following events. <clears throat> the event E is the sum of the two dice is equal to five. And the good news is we already wrote out, we already talked about this in 16.1. So we can just go back to that. Remember this? We said to write out the event that the sum is five. So we saw, we're just recalling all of these are, <clears throat> and there's 36 of them, are all the total possible outcomes when you roll two dice, two die, well, well a pair of dice. Um, there's 36 total possible outcomes. And then we wrote, there's one, two, three, four different ways that I can roll the dice that such that its sum would equal um, <clears throat> five. So it this the answer to this is four over thirty six. So we'll go back. Because there was four ways to tip that the dice could add to five out of a total of 36 total possible outcomes. And again, we've got to reduce this. <clears throat> I think if you use your cell phone calculator or you use the calc class calc, I think sometimes if you just put this in four over 36, I think it automatically reduces it for you. Um, you can figure out how to do it on a calculator to just make it reduce it for you. But other... The other way to do it is just start um, you start with your smallest number and find use numbers that divide into the, the smallest number in your fraction and then just keep trying different numbers, um, trying to get a number that divides into both to reduce it. Which is a little bit hard. If you email me, I can give you an even better way to, uh, a quicker way to, to help you reduce numbers. Okay, reduce your fractions, but they do have to be reduced in this homework. <clears throat> and but good luckily, um, I found that it usually the homework will tell you um your answer is correct, but it's in the wrong format. Usually the homework will tell you that's what that's what I found. So that's good news. Okay. Um E2, okay, so I would say I'm gonna use my probability, the probability of E1 is equal to this one nine. Okay. This Okay, what is the probability of this? The sum is less than or equal to three. And just like before, we already listed out the sample space. There's 36 things. This is the same problem of rolling two dice. So there's 36 things in the sample space. And we wrote out the sum is less than or equal to three. We already wrote out the, all, of the, all of the ways that that event could take place. So there's one, two, three. So it's three out of 36. because there was three ways for the dice to land on the sum is less than or equal to three. And there was a total of 36 ways that two dice could land. So um, we divide by three on top and bottom and we get one over 12. So that's the, pr the probability of E2 is equal to one over 12. There we go. Okay, then it says, both numbers will come up as odd numbers. And I believe that we did that too. Did we? Yeah, write out the, the prop, write, write out the event that both numbers will come up as odd numbers. So we already wrote that out. There's there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine different ways that both numbers could be odd and 36 total ways, possibilities to go. So it's nine out of 36. So divide by nine, divide by nine, and I get one over four. That is a probability of event B happening here. 
And there we go. So it's really important in these problems to list out all the possible outcomes. That's going to be their denominator. And then list out all the possible ways that you could get this, the desired event to happen. Okay. And let's look at the next one. It says a card is drawn out of a standard deck of 52. Find the probability of each of the following events. So we saw earlier, we already wrote, we already saw all the total possible cards that could be pick, picked. And we saw earlier the ways a jack could be picked. So <clears throat> let me just go back to the page really quick. So <clears throat> Here is all the total possible cards that we could pick if we, and that the total possible outcomes. And here, if you look at just the jacks, that is, there's only four of them, as you see. There's one, two, three, four, and there's a total of 52 cards. So the probability of me getting a jack is four out of the total 52. And I have to, I, we have to always make sure that we completely reduce it. And so it's one out of 13 for the probability of E, one here. Okay. Then the probability of E2, the probability that I will draw a club, let's go back to the picture again. So the total possible outcomes is the same because it's standard, we're picking from a standard de deck of cards. And look at the number of clubs. There's 13 of each suit, so there's 13 clubs. So that's going to be 13 ways to pick a club out of the total possible outcomes, which is 52. So it's 13 out of 52. And there you go. So the probability of event E is one fourth. Okay, now it says find the odds of a draw drawing a jack from a deck of 52 cards. So what they're really asking me is they're just asking me to write this right here um, in term just in a different way in terms of odds. So <clears throat> <clears throat> this numerator is the number of ways that I can draw a jack or the equivalency of that because we reduced it, right? So <clears throat> the odds of drawing a jack. So I'm gonna put the number of ways I can get a jack compared to the number of different ways I could get another card. So wait, 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 ah, 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 ah. I'm sorry. Okay, so there's 13 possible cards. We could, I mean, I, it's a little bit easier to think about it with four and, and 52, maybe I'll write it as that. Okay, because for some reason it's reducing and it's harder for me to even think about the answer, but let's just think about it in terms of four and 52. So the odds of getting a jack are there's four ways for me to get a jack. And what are the ways that I could not get a jack? Well, it would be the total possible number of cards minus the ways I can get my jack. So that would be 48. I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So 42, 40 to 48. Or four, four to 48. That is what my likelihood is to, um, of, <clears throat> that's my likelihood of my odds of drawing a jack. Now, but except now one more step here is that I would have to reduce this. And ratios are just like fractions. If you see, you know, you can kind of think about this if as a as you would a fraction, that if you see that, that there's a number that divides into four and 48, then you need to reduce it just like you would with a fraction. 
So because, and that's be, if we're saying, you know, four loaves of bread is worth $48. Well, I can divide both sides by four and that would say, well, one loaf of bread is therefore worth $12. So that is one way of doing it. Wait, um, did I do 48 divided by, by 12? Let me just double check it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that, that looks good. Sorry, sorry. Um, <clears throat> all right, let me just do it the other way really quickly. If I just went from the reduced format, I would have done the total number of outcomes minus the <clears throat> minus the my desired outcome, and that would have been one to twelve too. So if you wanted to just go from the you if you wanted to use the reduced format, um, <clears throat> you could do that too. You just you just the numerator or the denominator minus the numerator, and then you to find that second number. But anyways, all right. So this is the number that you want. Your odds are one to 12. And like I said, that means that if we're going back to that vision of the hat, that means that there's a one, your name is in there one time and somebody else's name in there is in there 12 times for every one time that your name is in that hat. So they're a lot more likely to, um, you're a lot more likely to draw a card not that's not a jack than you are to draw a card that is a jack. All right, and then <clears throat> find the odds of each of the following events. So if some the probability of some event is four over seven, what are the odds? So this is the total number of outcomes, the seven, and this is the outcomes that make us happy with the event E occurred. So the numerator is always gonna be the, that's um, in favor of our event occurring, so that's four. And the second number is just gonna be seven minus four. So that's three. So that means the odds were four to three. And with the second one, it's written as a decimal, but I can write any decimal as a fraction. And your sometimes your, de your calculator in your cell phone, if you put a decimal in, sometimes it automatically puts it to a fraction. Um, <clears throat> but in other words, another way to always turn a decimal into a fraction is by I draw it, and I hope I can see it. I'm going to draw it in another um, color. But do you see um, the decimal? I turn the decimal into a lowercase i by writing a line underneath the decimal. Next, I write a line through the decimal. Oh, and oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I like to do the other thing first. Hold on. Okay, sorry, I'd make the decimal into a lowercase i. <laughs> then for all the numbers to the right of the decimal, I put a zero underneath them. So I put a zero underneath the six. Now I draw a line through the decimal and the decimal is now gone. I draw a fraction bar. And now this preceding zero is not important anymore, but it becomes six over 10. So 0. 0.6 is equal to six over 10. And now we can, now that it's a fraction, we can do the same thing as we did above. And we will say that the first number is gonna be six. And the second number is gonna be the denominator 10 minus the numerator, which is four. So it's gonna be six to four. But like I said, we probably don't wanna, it's like, this is like a, a ratio that I see there's a number that divides into six and four. It needs to be written in reduced form. So I would divide both this side by two and I would get three and I would divide this side by two and I would get two. So <clears throat> the ratio is three to two. So in this case, the odds are for you because there's three times, there's um, your three is bigger than two. Okay. All right. Then they say, find the probability of an event if the odds are, are against the event, the event, odds against the event. So these are the odds against the event are five to seven. So, <clears throat> if the odds against the event 
are five to seven, then the odds for the event would be seven to five. It's just written the other, the opposite direction, right? <clears throat> and when we think about it this way, now we can say, well, the, then the probability would be seven for because the probability for the, the probability for the event, the number of ways that probably the event could occur is seven over the total possible possible outcomes, which is seven plus five. The two numbers added together, which is 12. So the probability of this event happening is seven out of 12. There you go. All right. Okay. Now there's one more problem in the homework that I wanted to go over. So you can stop the video now if you want to, but if you want help, um, and you can just come back to this video at the end if you want homework for chapter, help with homework, chapter number four. But I'm just going to go over it with you so that um, it's a little easier. So notice it was a little bit more difficult problem. So let me show you what, and I'll read the problem to you. All right. So... <clears throat> Here is something similar to your problem in number four in the homework. It says, a coin is tossed 17 times. What is the probability that none of the tosses come up tails? So to really understand this, imagine, you know, flipping this coin and you're recording whether it lands on heads or tails. And you, what you have to do is you have to list all the total possible outcomes. Like for instance, the first toss could be heads, the second toss tails, the third hot, third toss could be another heads, the third toss, you know, the, the fourth toss tails, fifth toss tails, sixth toss tails, seventh toss tails, eighth toss heads, you know, this is one possible outcome. And then if I get all of the first 16 the same if all I did was change the last one from heads to tails that would be a different possible outcome and so on so we would now I'm not actually going to make you list out all those possible outcomes but you get an idea of what the list would look like <clears throat> and like here the third one that I have listed here then now the now the last one is 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 different from the first one and the last one is still tails but it's different than the second thing here because instead of being a heads on the last roll, it's a tails on the last roll. And so, and so on. You would keep listing down all of the possible outcomes when you when you um, record down heads or tails for 17 tosses. Now, <clears throat> they ask us, what is the probability that none of the tosses come up tails? So we have to consider all the total possible outcomes and we have to count how many there are. And we have to think about the number of ways that we can get none of them tails, which would mean that every single one of them is heads. <clears throat> so you can see if I was to list out all the different possible ways that the, that the, the coins could land, there's only one way that they could land all on heads. The first one will land on heads, the second one will land on heads, third one will land on heads, and so on. There's only one way that that could happen. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the event here, the number in our event is one. But the hard part is, well, how many different possible combinations of H's and T's are there? <clears throat> Right, that's what really we're asking. And so we can think about the way we did this um, <clears throat> back in section 16.2. We could think that, that there's 17 different decisions that we're going to be making, like we saw earlier, like, like I have a decision about my the different shirt I have to wear. I have a decision about the, the different shorts I'm, or pant bottoms I'm going to wear and the different sweaters we're going to wear. So we can think about that the same way that we're tossing a coin and that's a new decision that we're going to make because like every coin is going to make a choice. It has two choices, heads or tails. So we can think about it like that. And 
if we think about it like that, then the first choice here, the first coin tossed has two choices times the second coin has two choices times the third coin has two choices. And if we think about it like that, we can list out all of the different possible outcomes. And there's going to be 17, we're, we're pop tossing the coin 17 times. So there's 17 different decisions to make. And there's each one has two choices. So let me see, one, two, three, four, five. So that we're going to end up multiplying two times by itself 17 times, which is quite a little bit of times, but so we this is going to be two to the 17th. That is the end. That's the total number of things in our total, total number of ways that we could have T's and H's, combinations of T's and H's, really. So <clears throat> our answer here, what is the probability that none of these um come up tails? The, 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 there's only one way for them to come up all not tails, but that is if they all come up heads. And so that's one in two over two to the 17th power. And so your calculator, the, the homework actually wants you to find what is two to the 17th power. So um, usually you can do that by entering a number two into your calculator or, and then you could find a little, um, you could either find the X to the Y X um, bar, um, key, or you could find a key that looks like a little carrot. That means to the power of, and then you can enter in 17 here, one seven to be 17 and press enter. But let me show you quickly how it'd be done on a calculator. Okay, so <clears throat> this is our class calc. So you can go into the modules page in our classroom and then you can click on the start here and then you can click on calculator and then this will bring you to this class calc. And so the way we'll do this is you enter in the number like two and then we, we go to algebra ALG and then it has this A to the N. On some calculators, you see X to the Y power right here. You click on that and then um, we can put in the number 17. And then we pre then it automatically gives us the answer is one, 131,072. So now we can write down that answer. Also, um, <clears throat> Let me, I'll show you on the, another scientific calculator also what it looks like. So here's another scientific calculator and it's maybe you might have a calculator similar to this but um, you can do two, I enter a two. Let me just clear out everything. Wait, well. Okay, and then what I can do is I can enter a two, and then now there's a little, it looks like an upside down V, and it's right above the division sign on my calculator, but I can click on that and that, that, that means to the power of. So two to the power of, now I can enter 17 and now I can press enter and it'll show me the answer that way, okay? So like, it, and also I've seen it on other calculators. Sometimes it's on the left-hand column here, um, like near the log and X squared. Sometimes where, where it says X squared, and it'll above the X squared symbol in blue, it'll say X to the Y. And so you have to press second, the x squared button or you know to get to the x to the y button and then you can also enter to a, a certain power anyways that's how you would do it all right um <clears throat> um okay so we we figured out that two to the 17th power is 1000 and one thousand. Oh no, sorry, one hundred thirty-one thousand and seventy-two. So the probability that I'm going to um, come up with 
none of the tosses being tails is one in 131,072. Next, um, they ask, what is the probability that exactly one of the 17 tosses comes up tails? Well, <clears throat> if you think about it, about, we're trying to list all the different ways that you could have one tails and all the rest heads. Well, the tails could have been the first toss that you, that you um, first coin, first time you crossed, crossed the coin the coin, and that's one possible outcome. But then the tails could have been the second toss, so that's another possible outcome, or the tails could have been the third toss, or the tails could have been the fourth toss, or the fifth toss, or the sixth toss. So <clears throat> the tails, that one tail, we can think about it as how many different ways or how many different choices does that tail have um, to pick, you know, from the first toss to the last toss. So there's 17 different spots that that, that tail could take, the first spot, the second toss, spot, third spot. And so we could think about it like that, and that would tell us that there's 17 all the way to the last spot, that the tails could have been the last roll. So there's 17 different spots. So there's 17 different places for that tails to be in. So there's if we listed out all the different ways that all the head could be heads and one tails, that's all the way different ways that that could happen. So there's 17 of those over the total 1,000, or no, sorry, 131,072. So you would have to make sure this is completely reduced, and that you just sort of have to make sure that seven that that all the numbers that divide into 17, all none of those divide into the bottom number. And if you figured that's true, then um, it would be completely reduced. So the big thing here is. Um, is is the bottom number here divisible by 17? So we should check that. Okay, 17 does not go equally into the denominator, so this is complete reduced because there's no other numbers that divide into 17. And it, if we reduce a fraction, that means there's a number that that goes into the numerator and denominator. There's no other numbers that go into the numerator. This is completely reduced. So let's go on to the next one. It says there are, oh wait, okay. The, the question says, you read it over here. I, I mixed this up a little bit. I put my question over here and the answer starts over here. But anyways, what is the probability that 16 or more of these tosses come up tails? Well, um. First, we have to think about this in two ways. There's two ways of getting 16 or more. You can get exactly 16, or you could get more than 16, which would mean 17, all of them being tails, because there's only 17 tosses. So um, we have to count first the number of ways that you can get 16 tails, which is exactly the number of ways that we just um, we just saw in the previous problem. Um, <clears throat> because um, when they ask the question, um, how many ways can we get 16 tails? That's also asking, that's saying, how many ways could I get only one heads, right? If 16 are tails, that means there's one heads. So how many ways can I get one heads? Where well, the one heads could be the first spot, the second spot, third spot, fourth spot, all the way down to the last spot. So that's the number of ways that we could have one heads and the rest tails. So that was 17 from the previous problem. It's exactly the same result. There's 17 ways that you could have one heads and the rest tails. And that is the same as saying a number of ways of getting exactly 16 tails. All right. Then we also have to consider the number of times that you can get more than 16 well, there's a total of 17 tosses, so more than 16 would be would mean that all 17 were tails, and there's only one way of doing that. Um, <clears throat> there's only <clears throat> so there that I add the 17 plus one, and that equals 18. There's I add all the ways that I can get exactly 16 tails, and I add all, that to all the ways I can get 17 tails, and that is the total amount of ways that can get 17 or more tails. So um, the answer here is 18 over the total amount of, of um, possible 
outcomes, which is 131 and 72, I believe. Right. And then we would just have to make sure here that, like I said, to reduce this fraction, you have to think of all the numbers that divide into 18. And um, <clears throat> one way of doing this, let me just quickly do this, is one way to do this is prime factoring 18. The prime factors of 18 are 3 and 2. So if 3 doesn't go into um, the, num the denominator here, then no number that's a multiple of 3 is going to go into that number either. And the same thing with 2. If 2 doesn't divide into this denominator, if 2 doesn't divide into this denominator, then no multiple of 2 is going to divide into that denominator. So if we have to check if any, um, we already know that two divides into the numerator and three also divides into the numerator. So we need to make sure that none of those numbers divide into the denominator here, which I can already see it's divisible by two. So we can reduce this fraction. So um, <clears throat> just to reiterate this, one way of reducing a fraction is by prime factoring the smaller number <clears throat> and checking if those prime numbers divide into the bottom number. If those prime numbers do not divide into the bottom number, then um, the number is completely reduced. If they do divide into the bottom number, then you wanna go ahead and divide by that number. Okay, so I can already see that 18, and is divided by two and the denominator is divided by two. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide by two. So I get nine over, um, so I divided the top and bottom by two and I got nine over six, five, five, three, six. All right, now the only things that divide into nine are three. So I have to just make sure that, that not, this number is not divisible by three, so. Let's try to divide it by three and see what we get. And I get a decimal answer. So this is completely reduced as it is. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so I hope that you found this valuable. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, <clears throat> have a great day.